All right. All right. So done. on today's episode of the podcast. Nice job, by the way. <laughs> no problem. Uh, we are going to be going over the main topic of anime that is specifically good for beginner Japanese language learners. Right. Yes. So for those that are trying to learn the language, um, you got to start somewhere. And a good way, place to start is with anime. Is this really an episode that we needed Chiaki on? True. But um, I'm hoping I will carry it, and then I'm hoping you guys can ask we'll, ask really thoughtful questions. We'll do our best. Because you both you both would fall into like the category of a person who would maybe use one of these anime to try to start learning Japanese. And honestly, for me, having not really had the opportunity to speak Japanese in quite a long time, I even I would benefit from from doing from going through these sort of exercises that we're going to be talking about. Because I mean, at the peak of my Japanese, I could I could watch an episode of like Sazai San and understand what was going on. But after not having used Japanese for two years, um, I'm sure that I need a lot of brushing up, and I would probably benefit from this too. So I'm I'm not I am not necessarily Im- immune from this sort of discussion for my own personal benefit. So. Of course, a lot of these shows are like little kid shows, as you can imagine. I mean, we're not exactly watching Drifters here to get our Japanese language learning. Maybe you're not. Oh, no. <laughs> you just, he's like, <laughs> you I'm just. want to learn old school Japanese. Cosmo's like, I'm just going to skip the I eat pizza grammar and I'm going straight to the samurai decapitates the, the warrior yeah. of the Shinsengumi. <laughs> I'm going to scare the crap out of some old Japanese people. <laughs> it's like K- Kazuo goes to Japan, and when he's talking to people, he's, he's like, unable, Teme. He's, like, like Teme. <laughs> he, he's, he's, he, he's unable to say the basic things that he needs to buy, like milk at the grocery store, yeah. and all he can say is like, Teme, leave your head, leave your head with me because I will kill you. That's like all he can <laughs> That's say. All I can That's, say. That's vo- all you need to be able to say. It's fine. Your sure. vocabulary is limited to uh, to, get to threats and descriptions of gore porn from drifters. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Very nice. So, Chi Sweet Home is an obvious place to start. It's Chi Sweet Home is an anime that has a few seasons now. It's about a kitten named Chi who ends up living with a human family and has cute adventures. And that's basically all it is from start to finish. Okay. And it the story takes place entirely from the cat's point of view. So um, it's... Adorable. Very adorable. Wait, is it like... The count the cat's like POV point of view. Like, are no, you no, seeing out like, of the cat's no, the eyes? Cats, the cat's like the narrative. That would be really interesting. Yeah, I think they do jump into into point of view like once in a while, but mostly it just follows what she's doing, and you know you'll you'll hear her thoughts and things like that. And the reason why this is really great to be as a, as a Japanese learning tool is because one, it uses really short, simple sentences. Right. And it's for little kids mostly. I I actually this. This anime actually started out as a seinen manga, which is really bizarre because seinen is like for adult Older women. Adult no, adult men. Oh, adult, oh I'm sorry, yeah. Wait, which what's, is, what's adult women? Um I'm not sure. Huh. I can't remember the term, but um it, seinen is for adult men. It's like the JoJo, it's like the the same as like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure or Berserk. I mean, adult men like cats too, bro. Don't hate, man. Yeah, I know, Don't but judge it's me. just like normally you think seinen is n- violent and aggressive mm. whereas like Golgo 13 type stuff whereas Chi Sweet Home is it's using the vocabulary of like a five, of like a 5 year old and is just about a cute kitten that rolls around and plays with things and Jose Jose that's adult right. women yeah. all right that was bugging me so it uses very simple short sentences and also the anime has a game and also and a manga based after it and that both use really simple japanese so if you're if you're studying japanese Picking up one of these manga and like translating it would mm-hmm. be a really fantastic way for you to sort of learn some Japanese, some written Japanese, because they use really limited amounts of kanji. It's mostly hiragana, which, which, which even you two not knowing any Japanese, you could learn hiragana. Hey, hey I know some Japanese. Even oh, I took three oh, semesters did. of Japanese. Did you in really? College. I didn't take. Did yeah, you really? I did. Well, I, what can you say? Um. Well. I mean, I get you haven't. It's been a, a while it, since it's, college. It's been but a while. I mean, I, I, I probably know some some basics. Uh, I know how to ask people if they if they need another beer in in Japanese. Oh, yeah, I'm trying to remember how to. You're um, gonna need that when you go to Japan. <laughs> ask people if they want if they want a beer if they well, want me to get them a beer. Well, so, pe- pe- it's biru no mi masenka. Well, people will be asking you that, so you you need to know you need to understand them. I, I'm just gonna say hi, hi to everything. 
That would work. My move, right? That's, my, that's like, yes, please, right? Hi, onegashimasu. My, onegashimasu. That's really formal. You could just say like domo or something like that because. But or, I would rather be incredibly overly polite and formal so that they know that I'm trying not to insult them. Actually, domo is like something I feel domo. like. I feel like domo is like what an old man would say. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be. A, yeah. That'd be adorable. <laughs> you just speak like you speak like speak an old like man, a, like and an I speak man. like an assassin from the 1500s. Yeah. And they know instantly that we learned our <laughs> Japanese from anime. I, I remember part of how to introduce yourself in Japanese. It's like, um, okay, uh, Hajime washite, uh, Tony des, d- d- dozo that, yoroshiku onegashimasu, something like that. That would that's quite good. Is that that's right? Exactly what that's exactly what you could say. Okay. Uh, yeah. I see. I didn't take classes. Well, I. There was a Japanese language like group meetup thing that was going on for a little while here locally in Tampa. And I went to that for a couple of meetings, just me and a buddy of mine that were interested in it. And then we kind of, you know. If I were fell formally off. introducing you to somebody, mm-hmm. I would say something like, Ji kosho kai sasete itadakimasu. Like, um, please allow me to introduce watashi uh, no uh, tomodachi wa Tony desu. Tony tomoshimasu. Like, my friend Tony. Um, I'm going to play a clip from Chi Sweet Home here because it's super cute and the dialogue is really easy to, if you're, if you're a person who's like in your second year of Japanese in college or maybe your third year, you, you, you may be able to follow what's going on here. It's not super complex. This is from the recent 2016 season of G Sweet Home, which it's, is done in like CG. I was going to say, it looks like claymation or something. It's a little different. It's diff. Don't. Yeah, so, so why is the kid white? Well, it's anime, man. Like, he's a blonde haired kid. Asobi Taino. You, do you want to play? So he's. Oh, she's going to go ham kid just, on the, that ball. The kid just dropped a bouncy ball, and she's looking. Her killer, her killer instinct kicks in. She pounces. <laughs> the, you, see so, the, you see the murder in her eyes. Yeah, the cat's playing with a. Sore wa dame. That's Stop chi. It. Chi. That's bad. She's she's playing with her food before she slaughters it and eats it. Oh, n- now 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 what are they saying? <laughs> He's. I think he just said, "What's up, bitch." <laughs> <laughs> Is that not right? Kono Bodu! Like this ball, like they it's very easy Japanese. So Oh, Chi just tackled the boy oh. and he just dropped the bouncy balls everywhere. Oh, they I gotta, believe Chi just murdered that they, child. They have to put her down now. She's tasted human blood. <laughs> they're, gonna <have> to, <laughs> they're gonna have to put her to sleep. Yeah, so they're like, oh, Asobi Taino, like, do you wanna play? Or in like, oh, Kore Nani, what is this? You know, it's very yeah. easy, very easy sort of Japanese to follow. And and it's a super cute show anyway. I mean, it's like the internet. It, it is really Sorry, cute. Sorry, I'm laughing at something completely different. The, the, the internet <laughs> is basically naked women and cats. The chat, the chat just dropped a dime on us. They said, teach Kazo how to say, I'm here to increase your population. <laughs> <laughs> I am here to save you all. Your, your economic worries are over. It's like that old anime DNA squared about that one dude who, like, in the future has increased the population of the entire world. He's, like, banged 90% of the population, apparently, and some girl comes back from the past to stop him. Ore no chinko de... No. <laughs> no, stop. I don't know what that means, but I don't like where uh, it's going. I'd be like, with Chinko's my, penis is like, yes. With my penis... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so and the episodes themselves of Cheese Sweet Home are really short. They're mm. a few minutes usually, like five six minutes long. Oh wow! So it, it's kind of like bite sized learning. So it's really hard to listen to Japanese or any language really and actively try to translate it while they're speaking for 10, 20, 20 minutes. You know, but but in in four or five minute bite sized chunks, you don't really get the brain overload, and it's yeah. easy for you to sort of have these little. Because the original Cheese Speed Home is like a hundred episodes, and they're all like four minutes long. Well, dude, yeah, I mean that's the thing is that like yes, it's it's a kids show and all that stuff, but as you said earlier, I mean when you're just learning the language, you want to start at that level. Like you know, I know people who have been studying Japanese. Like I know a guy that I follow on on YouTube that he's been in Japan for like eight years and is like lives there and married and has a kid, and right? Kids and all that stuff. But even he talks about reading on like a middle school level. So, you know, you read a lot of like middle school books and manga and that kind of stuff. So it takes a long time to become proficient in that language. So you definitely want to 
take your time and start slow with something like that. So here's an example of something they might say in the show. So this 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 means does the kitty want to go outside? I need to know how to say that. Do you okay? <laughs> so you would say so 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 Nacol. Oh <laughs> Nacol. Nacol is cat, right? Okay. Uh-huh. Nacol osoto. 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 Osoto being outside uh-huh. and then Naka being inside. So okay. Osoto. Oh wait, the kitty wants to go inside. Or I want to go inside the kitty. Is that, is <laughs> that is not ex- that is not that is not what Wait. Is that, that an option? That, that would be slang that would be sl- that would be slang. <laughs> that they don't understand. <laughs> that would be slang that it never translates. So, so, so that's a common you problem. Call a person nickel and have it mean the same as if you were. Yeah, that would make any sense. Kid. They would. They literally. Are, they literally think you're saying cat. <laughs> There's no like slang for the cousin is losing his mind. It's, 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 like, it, it's a common. Probably not even that. It probably means I want to like slice the cat open and go inside of it. It's a common um, translation <laughs> issue. Like in, a, we have so much slang in English that you don't think about. <laughs> and when you try to translate that in your brain, in your head, yeah. it never works. So you, you, <laughs> you can't do it. So, so neko osoto osoto ni ni meaning like the it's like a directional um, preposition. So like basically that means go outside. Detai mm-hmm. no. So detai mean tai being like the verb ending you use when you when you want to say do you want to do something. Okay. And deiru meaning de meaning like to go out. So basically detai is do you want to go out. So, neko, it's only three things here. Neko, osoto, detai, no. And no is like you something you would say for a question. So, the question uh, is very simple. Kitty, literally, kitty, outside, want to go? Okay, so what's the difference between no and ka? There is no difference. No is more, no is, in, is more informal. informal. Okay. Uh, no, I, I use that a lot. I use them both. But okay. it's just easier. Like, detai, no. It's just very easy. Versus detai, ka. You could say that. I think no feels more natural to me, but... Well, I was... All I was ever taught was was ka. Like, I was never taught the no, the informal no. So, yeah, like, for me... Uh, for me, the tai ka, like, the, the sound of the ka as yeah. a finisher, mm-hmm. like, sounds more accurate to me because I know no different. I, t- to me, I... Finish him. To, 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 <laughs> to me, I would normally use... I, I feel like I use ka after I'm using the entire, like, formal verb structure. Like, if you were right. to say... Like de like de tai de mas like de mas ka or de oh, well, ka. like like I was saying before biru onomi masen ka. Right, so that on, so like so that's re, that that's that was real, super formal. That's real well, formal. But Chiaki <laughs> uh, was actually the one who taught it to me, and she said, as a person who is in a service industry, as a person mm-hmm. who is working, it is actually best to be more formal to your customers. Correct. Sure. As so, formal as you can be, as formal as you can be. Yeah. So, f- so if I was just asking you if you wanted a beer, it would be different versus asking a customer if I wanted a beer. Um, so, how would I ask you? So, Karayuki Cat in the chat uh, raises an interesting point. She says that uh, she thought "no" was the possessive part participle. Participle. Oh, okay. So, oh, like, yeah. like when you say like, um, like uh, you know, this belongs to this person. It is, no, it's, it's correct. A term so, wh- what's the difference there? I mean, it's the same. It's word. it's the same like it's just where you put it. It's the same sound. It's the same. It's the same hiragana character, but depending on where it is in the sentence, it has different meanings. So, no, what what um the what was her name in the chat? Um, his name? Ka, no, as a she uh, Karayuki. Karayuki, yeah. the no the no that you the no that you're talking about would be like when you're when you slap it between two verbs. Like if I wanted to say my cat, I would say like Watashi no neko. Which is my cat? What if you were? Mm-hmm. What if you were asking, "Is this my cat?" Um, Wait, why would uh-huh. you say watashi? It's just like I. Well, no, but why? Why would? Why isn't that the the female? No, I? um, there's so many different. There's so many different eyes. There's watashi. There's for what you're talking about is atashi. Well, no, watashi wa was always I am. That's like for girls. No, wasn't it? So I think that's just like it's a atashi. Book. The girl, and, and you can say and, Watashi and, and, as and, a girl. And, and, yeah. Well, but I thought that Orewa and Bokuwa were guy. I think Ore, Ore is just very informal. So like, Ore is very is very informal. I, Boku is a little more formal. Atashi is formal for women. Watashi is formal for both men and women. This is my understanding. Mm. And then there's mm. like even more formal things than that that you'll never need. But. I think I've heard the same thing. Japanese is is one of the reasons why it's so hard is because 
every level of formality is almost like learning a whole other language. Everything is based on social, like formal structure. Exactly. And if you don't know where you or the other person sits, it's mm -hmm. almost impossible to have a conversation. It's weird. It's like what they teach you in college is what you learned, Kimiko, is like basically the first level of formal. But if you go higher than that, if you go up into like Kegel level of mm -hmm. formal, things become crazy. Like verbs double in length, shit just gets crazy. And if you go down into the informal, it's also hard because That's where I like everything to hang out. is everything is truncated and shortened. You did just make a joke that I missed. No, no, no. I was just saying that's where I like to stay is in the informal. Okay. So I just go up to people on the street. I'm like, us, us. <laughs> it's it's a, a good, it's a good question. So so if if you put the no on the end and you use the 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 no, like you got you kind of go down the upward and, inflection at the yeah, end. Yeah, you go down and up with your voice. Yeah. If, that's a question. Mm. If you put if you go like if you like Watashi no neko, uh, like you you could say like, kore uh, wa kimi no neko no. I probably wouldn't say that, but I just use them both. Maybe like your cat. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that, but it's a good question. Anyway, so yeah. Anyway, it's kind of fun to actually like teach some Japanese, but this is more of like what anime you should watch. I can't help myself though. <laughs> no, I think I think a lot of the listeners really appreciate well, it. You can keep throwing out more questions yeah. if people have them because it's I haven't I don't really have an opportunity to speak Japanese or even think about Japanese usually in my daily life. So we should probably do like a weekly or however biweekly Japanese lesson with. You know, well, I know Chiaki. I know people that I could literally have a Japanese person call in and do it. Yeah. Probably I could buy them a microphone or something. Well, I mean, like you also speak pretty decently, and then you can teach me, and we can make make it a video for the people to watch. I know more than enough grammar. Um, so there are other shows also that are really good here. So like, um, Sazai San, of course, is really good. Sazai San being a, we all know it, one of the most famous TV shows in Japan focuses on Sazai, which is a 20-something-year-old wife of a family, of a of a very extended family. Like, they call it the Dai Kazoku, because Dai meaning large and Kazoku meaning family. So it's, like, mm -hmm. not just your immediate family, but also your immediate and then maybe, like, the next level of family. So in Sazai... Extended family. Extended mm -hmm. family. So in, so in, in Sazai, sounds extended family. It's, it's her, her husband, her like her children and her mother and father so they all live together it's the grandparents are living with the are living with the or living with her and it's very common like in Japan to have your grandparents living with the family which makes a lot of sense actually mm -hmm. when we yeah. should maybe do more of that in it's the states it's common in a lot of cultures but not really like in the states like uh, in the Asian culture, it's very common. In the Spanish culture, it's very common. Incredibly. Yeah. That was my first thought was the Mexican family. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's in it's interesting that for some reason, I don't know if it's just the states or what. Yeah. I mean, it just makes sense because, like, we have, we have nursing home facilities and old people really struggle to live on their own sometimes. And we could solve all of that by just allowing our grandparents to live with us. Well, I was actually having a conversation with someone, I think it was even yesterday, Um about the concept of basically what you're talking about, Kazuo, just um, <laughs> uh, the concept of family and how we are probably one of the only countries or one of very, very few countries in the world that expect our children to move out at 18 years old yeah. and start a life all on their own. Right. Um, where everyone else lives in this sense of familial community for years and years and years. Oh, and, yeah. and there are some... There are some things where even when someone gets married and moves out, they will take their family with them. They will take their mm -hmm. grandparents with them or they will take an older relative to live with and take care of. And it almost stays in that sense of familial community throughout generations. We're like the only people who expect everyone to span <laughs> off and branch off into yeah. these little nuclear families that are completely separate I never from their original ones. I never understood that usage of the word nuclear. I, I don't know. Nu uh, I always think like nuclear energy and I'm like, I don't the nuclear I don't family. Get it. Yeah, I wonder that where came that from the from. 1950s American dream concept, but I don't know why they call it nuclear. Anyway, Maybe, so uh, to something to do with like, here's a, I don't know. Here's, here, <laughs> here's a clip from Sazai San. I'm not sure I can translate this honestly, because depending on what they're talking about, but <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> So the challenge with the challenge with this show is that the voices are very and it's not subtitled. The voices are very difficult, and it's the same problem with with, with Shin Chan. Is that like Shin Chan's voice is very gravelly and tough to listen to and tough to to understand the, the 
if you were to listen to an audio an audio recording of a Japanese like textbook, they speak very clearly, right? Mm-hmm. But 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 when you're listening to normal Japanese people's voices, you get all you get all types of different voices, and sometimes the pronunciations are not clear. So let's so here let let let's just listen to this. Okay. So basically, two guys just showed up at the door and they said, Okaeri nasai, basically meaning welcome home. And then he said, Katte kita, which is like, I, I literally the combination of two verbs, the verb to buy and the verb to come. So he's saying, I bought it and I came back, basically. Mm. And he just showed up with like a box full of desserts or something. <laughs> So this Japanese isn't really that complex. It's a little harder than, than it's harder than than um, cheese sweet home. Cheese sweet home, but yeah, it sounds. I, I think it's just you're right. The speed of it makes it a little more difficult to follow. The other challenge here is that there's children, um, children, and then sazai san, and then the old people all talking together, and they're all using different formalities. The children are using more formal language. The and the and the 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 old people are using like they don't give an F right because they're older so they're giving they're using like super informal everyone's using like different levels so like if you're an actual but that's how an actual Japanese conversation conversation would go especially if they weren't if they didn't know each other directly I think that with the family setting everyone's going to talk a little more informally right. but if they were just like acquaintances or business partners or something you're going to have people speaking at different levels of formality simultaneously you'll have even if like if I was at work and I was speaking to my boss, I'm speaking formally. He may not speak formally back to me, depending on his position. So, you really have to be able to understand different levels of formality simultaneously. And if you're learning Japanese, you're most likely going to learn those things anyway. And so, a show like Sazai San, which is a little closer to actual spoken Japanese, while while not being like not having super difficult vocabulary in it. Is a good way to practice those skills of like have, have, having multiple levels of formality simultaneously. Here, l- l- let's listen to it for a few more seconds. <laughs> I love the music. <laughs> I can't understand that. They're talking about sake, though. They're drinking sake. Um, yeah. So it's a little, even for me, that was a little difficult. But then again, I haven't used Japanese in two years. So there are other shows also. There's there's a show here I've never heard of before called Ganbare Odenkun, which is really an odd name for a show. And my cat just like leaned over my laptop, shook his head, and there's like liquid <laughs> all over my laptop. Now. He just drooled all over the place. <laughs> It's <laughs> really gross. <laughs> so, Gambare gam- Oden Kun yeah. is basically you can do it, Oden Kun, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I, mean, there's I would. There's no comma there, but. That's how I would translate it. And, like, this show is. It's a little bit like. He got drool on my laptop, too. Yeah, what it's everywhere. Heck? What the shit? What? This cat is, Jesus, like, leaking Neil? like a faucet. <laughs> so, Gambare Oden Kun, I've never heard of it before, but apparently it's a children's show. That is a little like Anpanman, Man, because Anpanman is like this character who's made out of bread. Right? Okay. But literally, on Anpan is bread, right? right. Mm-hmm. Um, and Oden is um, like a product made out of fish. Like they would, it's weird. I don't really like Oden too much. But Oden Kun, I guess, is made out of Oden. So it's a little more, this website's describing it as groovy and a little more psychedelic than the groovy. other shows. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so the story of Odin Kuhn, um, he's a, some, a small kin, kinchaku or mochi, or, or mochi filled bag of tofu who lives in a big pot of Odin. His friends include egg shaped girls, wise old slices of daikon radish, and even a sausage headed alpha male. Odin Kuhn uses his mochi in his head to get him and his friends and his customers out of hairy situations. What? The so they're like characters that are food and they interact in this giant pot of Odin. It's really weird. So okay. I have a clip here. And, and then someone's, someone eats them. 
人気がなくて売れないから顔の色も根性もあんなっちゃったのよ Wow そうなんだ That animation It's very, it's very simplistic そうよお手村の微妙な噂からえぐい特ダネまで何でも聞いてちょうだい I can't understand her at all This is really odd. This is very strange. It's a very strange cartoon. What is going on? She's literally. This is, this is frying me out. She's literally staring into this guy's ear, and there's like a world inside of his ear. This is, this is freaking me out. I'm so high right now. If I was high right now, I would be literally freaking out. What the hell is going on? Are they, is there a world inside his ear? Or are they using his, his ear as a periscope? As a, yeah. Anyway, that's What? frying me out. I gotta quit watching that. So <laughs> ap apparently, this is for kids. And if you wanna, if you wanna have another very weird anime to watch to learn Japanese while my cat licks his butt in front of the camera, <laughs> <laughs> he is on display looking at butt. <laughs> Ganbare Oden Kun is a good option for you, I suppose. And moving right along. Chibi Mariko chan and Crayon Shin chan are also good shows that are for children mostly.、Um, that focus, unlike, unlike Sazai san, <laughs> they focus more on the immediate family. You guys are, what, just, is, what is so funny about a cat licking himself? His, his <laughs> leg it's, it's is the, completely vertical. He's a cat. Like, like, you have, you're the cat king. He, he is, he is showing is himself off in perfect display for the camera. Like he is completely dead center on the screen, like leggy in the air. I wish he would sit here every time. Our viewership would probably go up because we have a cat. Probably. So, Sazai san has like, the, has like the grandparents and everything involved in the family, whereas Chibi Mariko chan and Crayon Shin chan do not.、They're, I, I haven't watched every episode of these shows, but I, so I imagine the grandparents may be around occasionally. But for the most part, they focus more on the immediate family and follows the lives of the younger school children, as opposed to Sazai san, which follows more the life of the mother. And Mariko chan. It has more of an innocent flair, whereas Crayon Shin Chan has more of, a, of the mischievous flair to it. We, we all know, we all know Shin, Shin, Shin Chan was on American TV, and they definitely played it up with lots of dirty humor.、Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Whereas the, the dub was vulgar as hell. To,、um, to be a man, you must have honor, honor and a penis. <laughs> that's, from, that's from the dub. So, yeah. Apparently, and I've heard this in Japan too, is that not all Japanese parents will let their kids watch Shin Chan because it's a little, a little more,、dirty. a little dirtier, but it's still it's not America dirty. No, it's not like what we did to it. <laughs> oh, we, what, we, do we, what do we do to it? We turned it into South Park. You know, it's like. So, but Maruko, Chibi Maruko chan,、um, has very simple, cute episodes that are, from, that are from Sakura chan, a girl in the show, from her. From her perspective, and shows her reactions and thoughts in a very authentic, childlike way. And the episodes are extremely simple. So, like, an episode of Chibi Mariko chan would be like、um, they go, she and her grandfather go to a bathhouse together. Or、um, she and, and her friend learn how to ride a bicycle. Just like very simple. I am a real child doing real child things.、Mm -hmm. here, is, here is the story spoken from the child's point of view with very childlike language. And because of that, it comes on right before Sazai san, which has probably really helped that show to, to proliferate and, and be popular for a long time. But also, just like the cute innocence of it, I think ha, is, sets the show apart. And, and so let's listen to a little bit of the, of the Japanese here. This is translated into Vietnamese. So, oh my God. So, no luck for any of us, but let's see here. マルコが必ず助けるからね。気をつけてな。待ってるぞ。So he's like, oh, 気をつけてな。He's an old man, so he's talking like an old man again. 気をつけてな、which is like, be careful, 待ってるぞ、which is like your samurai speech. Oh, nice. Zo. <laughs> so he's like,、uh, basically, 気をつけて、mm -hmm. 待ってる、which is like, you know, Be, be careful, I'll, I'll wait for you or whatever. Maru-chan, what are you doing? What's wrong? She, she's going to go home. Gome, you're going to be a little bit. So I can actually understand all this. Basically, she, it, she apologized to her friend for, for leaving so abruptly, and she's bringing a kettle full of water to her grandfather. Oh. 
I don't know why exactly, but that's what's happening. Cause he's thirsty, bro. Well, he did say he, he did say he was gonna. Yeah, so it's hot. They're, I like they're, the music. They're leaning up against the wall of their house in front of a fan because it's like hundred degrees outside. And nobody has air conditioning. In Japan, it's very uncommon. Huh. No, it's so terrible. Yeah, the water's out. Yep. There's no water in the Oh, there it goes. They fixed it. Yay. Yeah, the water's coming out. So yeah, so it's it's this Chibi Maruko chan just from what I've observed is very simple. Yeah. It's if you study Japanese for a year, you're going to understand a lot of it. So a year sounds like a long time, but in foreign language world, it really isn't. No. So, I mean, and that's for, and then that's even for a language that most people consider more simple, which mm -hmm. would be like French or Spanish. I think people usually yeah. consider that a little easier because it's also, it's also, those are closer to English. So, sure. but like in, in, in the world of foreign languages, Japan, Japanese is not exactly an easy language. So it was the only class I ever got a C in. Wow. At, 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 in college. In, in life. Well, this. The, oh the Japanese God. classes at our Nerd. college. Anything, anything below an A was failure. Okay, like wow. I was my my family was strict, but Japanese was the only. It was third semester, and it was uh, when they focused primarily on kanji. Hmm. It was the only class that I ever got below uh, B. Well, the Japanese classes at our college also sucked. I'll say that pretty, they was, were uh, terrible. They, they were sensei. almost a waste of time. So that was that was her name was Patterson Sensei. <laughs> nice. So Chibi Mariko Chan is a really good option for for those of you that. You may not be entertained by it very much because it's so childish. But and, it's so educational. But it's so educational. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I mean, it's sort of, I know you're making a joke, but it sort of is because it's it's understandable. Right. And while you may not enjoy it for its entertainment value, you will enjoy it because you can watch it and actually learn something from it because of the simple short sentences, the limited the limited vocabulary that's going to be in it. Well, and also being able to, like, j just from watching that clip, like, being able to see what's happening, you can kind of understand, you know, like, okay, she's saying something about the kettle, and, like, you can kind of piece together visually what's being what's going on. You, you could have understood all that with just the verb uh, waiting for you, um, going home, water, and it's terrible, and th that was basically, like, all they used. So, and that along with like the context of what you're watching is enough to understand what's happening. Yeah. So that's a good option. Shin Chan, as I said, is a little more mischievous. It's very cheeky. Um, there's dirty humor in it. Shin Chan's always like pulling his pants down and, and shaking his ass at people mm -hmm. and making fun of his parents and talking about how their parents are having marital problems and all this. <laughs> and, and, um, and that, and that, and that is the same in, in, in the Japanese version also. It's not just our English mm -hmm. version. Um, but I think in terms of like the family life, it's sort of the same. So let's listen to something from Shin Chan here. <laughs> and keeping in mind that Shin Chan's voice is like super, I think he's, he must be voiced by like a 65 year old man or something. Oh, really? His, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's Shin Chan. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Oh my god, it's so weird to hear it in Japanese. <laughs> Weather report. A little more complex than Shibi Maruko chan. <laughs> Weatherman was like, Yoku, tanky Yoku wakaranai. He's like, you know, the ten the weather I often don't understand is basically like like the like the literal translation. <laughs> Wait, he said he doesn't understand the weather. That that's how I literally translated it. Yeah. The, the subtitler said that the weather is often tricky to predict. Mm. So like just things like that. And this basic <laughs> basic family life events happening here. His mom looks like somebody out of Beetlejuice. Yeah. You've never seen Shin Chan before? Um, I've seen little pieces of it. Anyway, so I think in terms of like ranking these in order of difficulty so far, uh, um, Chi Sweet Home is probably the easiest. And that, and after that, I would say it's probably Chibi Mariko Chan, then Shin Chan, then Sazai San. So as you like develop your Japanese, you can sort of work your way up through these several shows. And between Sazai San, Shin Chan, Chibi Mariko Chan and Chi Sweet Home, you probably have something like 2,000 episodes of anime. Like, yeah. no shit, because they've all been running for so long. 
especially Sazaisan. So True. that's pretty much all you need. Then, of course, there's like Doraemon, Anpanmon, and even Dragon Ball, which I won't get into. But What about Pokemon? Pokemon also, I think. I think the yeah. problem with shows like that, though, is that since they're so based in fantasy, there's going to be a lot of terms that... Well, just the names of all of the yeah, different Pokemon, Yeah, exactly. Too, so suppose. it's like, um, like watching Naruto and trying to learn Japanese. Mm. You would learn pretty bad Japanese because of like a lot of the terms they use aren't terms that are actually used and even yeah. the way Naruto talks adding Date Bayo to the end of every sentence yeah like would screw you up so or like Sergeant Frog how they always have uh, uh, like the the surnames or the uh, suffixes at the end of everything yeah. kind of would make it confusing for somebody so, who didn't know the difference so yeah I think if you're gonna learn you want to learn from a show that's based in reality I was just thinking like just anime that take place maybe in high schools mm -hmm. Um, maybe not something that is, um, like definitely the, the anime that we've been talking about today, the kind of like for the younger generations and such, but also I feel like I've learned a lot of phrases and a lot of just general salutations from watching anime as a whole, right. uh, especially anime that take place in high schools or anime that slice of life specifically, like not something that's over the top or something that's incredibly fantasy, but just your generalized slice of life anime mm -hmm. could have a lot of opportunity for teaching you current phrasing as well. Yeah, you definitely don't want to watch Naruto and end up talking like Naruto, because that's not even close to proper. Some people look at you and be like, this guy. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah it's just, it's also how I wouldn't want to listen to Meowth talk and have, I don't some cat characters probably add Nyan to everything, and I don't think you want to talk like a cat accidentally in Japan. They would definitely make fun of you. So, but something like the shows we've talked about already, while you probably know about most of them already, they, they speak like real people, so you're not going to end up talking like a cat or like Naruto. While you, well, you know, from learning how to how to listen to Japanese while you watch it, so. But I, I would definitely grab the Cheese Sweet Home manga, because of all of these shows, that's the only one that I know of immediately that I've actually bought and actually personally own the mangas, and I can tell you that they are easy, easy, easy to to translate. So good for like learning the hiragana. Yes, and like the first and second grade level kanji, basically, like the first. You're not going to see anything beyond like the first three or four hundred kanji that you th that you would need to know in Japanese, which is right. still considered. I know four hundred kanji sounds like a shitload, and, but there's and, and it is thousands. But, but there's like I think <laughs> two thousand or something like that. To be fluent, you need to know like they've they've reduced it to like two thousand, yeah. which is mind blowing. That's, I mean, that's to, I think that's um what's N one or whatever the yeah, is two thousand kanji, which is to read the nuts. newspaper. It's crazy. It, it's nuts, especially because every word can be spelt using. Hiragana and katakana. It's crazy, dude. So it's just like kanji's extra. So yeah. Jap Jap Japanese is extra. At my at my peak, I knew about three hundred kanji, and that was enough to read the manga of Cheese Sweet Home. Mm -hmm. Practically nothing else other than that. Yeah, but it was enough. And that's like elementary school level. Yeah, it's like, it's like second grade. <laughs> so like I, I once took a Japanese class with my fourth graders. Mm -hmm. And I got decimated. I mean, it was <laughs> that had to be funny for them. I was not keeping up. I was able to understand like 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 the, some of the stuff they were writing on the chalkboard. Yeah. But when they started speaking in like their rapid fire Dude, speed, if I, I couldn't was, do it. If I was living and teaching in Japan, I would 100 percent do that. Just like oh yeah, it was fun. Yeah, they loved just it. Just like I mean, because you're already out of school, and I'm sure you're probably at like an elementary school or something like that. You just be like, I'm gonna go into the kindergarten class and <laughs> sit through their Japanese lesson. Dude, they love it, man. And it's <laughs> like they want you to be. They want you to interact with the kids as much as you can. Yeah. And so, like, you have to know your boundaries or whatever, but, like, mm -hmm. participating in a, in a class like that with the kids, you know, the, it doesn't distract them all that much because they're very serious about what they're doing. And, and they love the fact that you're there trying to do it. Yeah. I mean, even if you can't do it, they love the fact that you're there. I mean, and, like, I, a couple of times I rode the school bus that takes them home. Like, I'm in there <laughs> nice. with, like, I'm in there with, like, five and six-year-olds. Awesome. And they friggin' love it. That's awesome. And I'm, and I, and I don't know. I, I'm, I'm good with kids, so mm -hmm. I liked it. And it's, it's, just, it's just a good experience. So that's, of course, if you're, like, teaching elementary. If you're, if you're teaching middle school or high school, yeah. then mm -hmm. they're not going to be able to do this. Elementary school is, especially. I think it's the best. In my experience, middle school, the worst. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh. Because uh, I taught like <laughs> all different age groups for a year and a half or so. And middle school is just because they're going through that phase where they're starting to wonder why they have to listen to you. Oh, yeah. They, <laughs> they think they know everything. Yeah. And they've they've hit that rebellious like phase of theirs. Yeah. Where And high school, it's like they've gone over the hump and they just don't care anymore. And exactly. so you're like, I don't care. They're either. like little adults <laughs> as yeah. opposed to just but middle angry school, children. The worst. I taught. um 
I taught five-year-olds to 11-year-olds music theory. And the difference between those children was massive. Like, <laughs> not just in terms of age, but just in terms of attitude. Oh, yeah. And attitude towards you as a teacher is entirely different. My observation is that once they hit about 10, they don't give an F. Well, especially in Japan. They don't give an F. Like, yeah. it's uh, fourth graders are perfect. Third and fourth grade is the Third grade is the best class to teach, and by far because they're so interested, they're they're still young enough that they that they look at you with like wonder and, and and imagination, and they're like, "Wow, you're so cool, you're foreign, and English is so interesting, and it's so different." But they're not so young that they're that they're more likely to pee themselves and scream and cry just because you look at them. But they're also not so old that they would rather have you die. And I've told that story before. <laughs> I have definite horror stories from my Japanese students. So. Yeah, you do. That's about all I've got, guys. I mean, 2,000 anime episodes ought to be enough to teach you some Japanese, I would I would think. Just a little, at least basics, right? I mean, you're never going to watch every episode of Sazai Son. That shit's been on TV since, like, the mid-80s. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's like it's like their Simpsons. You're never going to watch uh, it all. Even, probably it funny? Even, probably even more than that. I don't, I don't think it's not funny like the Simpsons. It's more like mm-hmm. an actual slice of life of a Japanese family than it is, like, you know, Bart Simpson- Farting and skateboarding around town. Yeah. 